Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergsberg Arcade at BergsbergArcade.com and here we are with, well, not really quite part two of the basic vital bar, uh, more of along the lines of uh, pimping it out. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll just jump into Unity. And I'm going to go ahead and open up Mono Develop as well. Now we haven't started using the driver yet because I just wanted to do a few more things uh, with this actual script before we actually started using the, the driver on it. Uh, but anyway, we left off, uh, we had set to... I'll be able to display 75% when it starts up. So it looks like that. Now, there's a couple things I actually want to fix right off the bat. So I know these are going to arise. Let's say uh, we call this function and we pass in a number greater than one. Uh, let's do, I don't know, 2.5. It's still a float. Now when we go to start it, if uh, a value greater than one is ever passed in, you can see where the actual health bar ends here, but this line continues. And you can also see it up here as well. Uh, we don't want that. And the exact same thing is going to happen if it's passed in a number that's a negative. So if we went negative 2.5 and we were to fire this off, that's going to do the exact same thing, but uh, the other direction, you can see it better up here. Uh, we don't want that as well. So we're going to add a couple of lines of code just to make sure those things don't happen. And it really depends on the effect that you want. For me, if it's greater than 100%, we're just going to stop it at 100%. And if it's less than 0%, I'm just going to stop it at 0%. Now, this is pretty easy to do. I'm just going to put a couple of checks in here before we actually adjust the slider. And what we're going to say is if x is less than 0, then we're just going to have x equal 0. And, well, you probably guessed it uh, for the next one. And we're going to say else if x is greater than 1, Sorry, the chinchillas are distracting me right now. They're just dancing around looking funny. But anyway, uh, if x is greater than 1, then x is going to be equal to 1. Now, the reason why I used an else if statement here instead of just using two if statements, uh, basically, you can't have it less than 1 and greater than 1. So it's either going to fall into one of these two conditions or pass right through them. So basically, it just saves one check. So we'll go ahead. We'll save this off. We're going to leave it at 2.5. We'll go ahead. We'll start this up. And we notice it just stops. And you, like I said, you can see a little bit better up here. So that's one thing fixed. And just to make sure, we'll get rid of that negative at the top and start it up. And it should not go past there as well. So there we go. Uh, we got those two things fixed. Let's go back into the script. Now, the next thing I want to add is actual text to go over top of it so that we can pass in some sort of string value and it'll display it. Uh, probably, you know, the value of the actual... Uh, health, I guess. So if the person has 100 health, you know, we'd put a number 100 up there. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and use a UI label. So I'm just going to add that up here. And we'll start it off as public like we did before, just so we can see it. And I believe it's just called UI label. Yes. I am going to start it with an underscore. Well, no, actually, let's keep this public. And we'll just drag a reference onto that. And I'm just going to call it label. Or that. <laughs> And let's actually spell it right. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and save that off. I'm going to come up here, and I'm actually going to go ahead and create that label now. So let's extend this down a bit. And there's our vital bar. It's looking for a reference. So let's come down to our widget tool. I'm going to have to assign the atlas again. Every time I shut Unity down and start it back up, it's going to be looking for this. So there's no recently used one. So I'm going to have to do it manually. Uh, the font I was using, I believe, was that one. So good. We'll shrink this down again. And I want a label. And I'm just going to leave the uh, color of it being white. Uh, I don't want to add it to the panel. Well, for now, we'll add it to the panel. And I'm just going to leave the word new label there. What I'm going to do is actually go ahead and uh, create a new game object. I'm just going to create an empty, and I'm just going to call this vital bar. And I'm going to go ahead and zero this out. I'm going to move it under the panel. Then I'll go ahead and shrink vital bar up and the label itself. I'm put them there. Uh, vital bar, I'm going to reset its position. And well, let's move it this way. Well. Yeah, we'll leave it at zero, zero. 
for now. Well, I don't know. Do I want the center? Uh, let's see. Let's reset this position. I'm deciding if I want the actual vital wire to be in the center of it or or at the left. I think for now I'm just going to leave it at the left. So I'm going to go ahead and move the label over, get it centered. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect for now. I can sit down and actually add calculations later on to actually center it. I just want it reasonably centered. Great. So now I'm going to go ahead and actually take this vital bar here and move it back into the position I actually want it to be in. And I could actually go ahead and move the, the script that we've written up to here and expose the references again to uh, place them in, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on uh, the progress bar. I'll drag my label on down here. And just to test it out, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to try to access the text component of it and just change it. So label dot t e it's text is equal to I don't know I got it so we see that by default it just says new label so we'll start it off and it comes out to be I got it uh, one thing I do want to make sure though is that the label is center pivot which it is all right so we got that so the next thing I want to do is actually have an overrided function that allows me to not only pass in a float but also pass in a string to display as well. So I'm actually just going to copy this. I'm going to go ahead and post it down here. Close it off and we'll have one more parameter up here. And like I said, I'm just going to use a string. I'm just going to call it str. And what I'm going to do is this float that's passed in, I'm automatically just going to pass it to this one. So let's grab this, paste it down here, put a colon. So that takes care of the number. Now what we have to do is actually just take care of the, the actual text, which actually isn't that hard. We'll just take this, uh, post it in here, and we'll have to change what it's equal to. Uh, we'll just put it to str. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to being 50%. And I'm also going to pass in a string of, uh, uh, well, let's just say, I don't know, 100. Of 200. So we'll go ahead, we'll save this off. And when we start it back up, we see, you know, it says 100 of 200. The health bar is actually decreased to 50%. So it's starting to actually come along pretty good. Uh, we can't, let's actually take a look at the draw calls. This is one of the reasons why I like uh, using the, the different uh, GUI things, that you really get a low number of draw calls. Now, we're getting six draw calls here, but to be honest, it's most of it, I think, is just coming from uh, the stuff that pops up. If you start actually moving stuff around, I've seen it drop down. There we go, draw calls two. So we have one draw call for this and then one draw call for all of our UI. And like he says in his videos, if you actually stick to using the same Atlas uh, for all your UI, you should be able to get everything down to one draw call. Even if you have a mini map and it's all dynamic and everything else, you can still probably get it down to one or maybe two, three draw calls for your whole GUI. So that, that's actually really good. But I'm going to go ahead, we'll stop that and close down the stats. And the last thing I actually want to add to this script, for at least for now, is uh, the ability to toggle that display on and off. Sometimes you're not going to want to have that there. So let's go ahead, we'll head back into Mono Develop. And uh, let me see, actually we should get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. That's when we're testing it. I'm just going to go up to the top here, create another Boolean value. And I want to put a space between my public and private parts. <laughs> uh, we'll just say private bool and I'm just going to call it display text and I'm going to start that off as equaling false. So by default we're not going to have any text displayed and I'm going to create a toggle for it down here so I'm just going to create uh, a public setter and getter and it will return a bool and I'm just going to say display text. 
So we'll go ahead, we'll set our setter. And our getter. Well, I just cannot type today. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to move the setter to the bottom because there's going to be a bit of typing I want to do in here first. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is actually set my display text variable to equal whatever value I am passing in here. And then afterwards I want to check to see if my value is equal to false, which of course we'll use the shorthand for. And if it does, uh, there's a few options here. We could disable it. Uh, I don't really want to delete it. Uh, to be honest, I don't even want to disable it. What I'm going to do is actually just make it equal to an empty string. Uh, later on, I may find out that for some reason I don't want to do this. But for now, I'm just going to make it equal to being well, an empty string. So there's just nothing there being displayed. Uh, that should be it for this. Now, I'm actually going to come up here to my, uh, uh, well, let's do it in the awake function. And I'm actually going to set it by default not to actually display anything. So I just want to make sure it's cleared out. So, well, instead of actually adding the line of code, we could just come up here and delete what's in here. Uh, but I'm going to add it as a line of code as well, just to make sure. So I'm going to say display text. And I'm just going to pass in false. Oops, sorry. We have it set as a setter and getter. Or better yet, since we have it up here set to false. Let's actually use the variable name. Uh, let's go ahead, we'll save that off. Let's go over to here, check the console. We do have an error. Uh, it does not exist. And that's because we actually used label and it was public. So we'll go ahead, we'll fix that up and all the errors are gone. So we're almost done. The one last thing I want to do is actually add some way that when we're passing values in here, uh, it automatically clears the text out for us. So basically it sets, uh, sets it equal to being empty. Uh, but when we're passing it through here, uh, if what we're passing it is not empty, to reset it. So I'm going to go ahead and call display text uh, equals false. Probably not the most efficient way to do it, but without a whole lot of planning, just kind of going off the top of my head, this this will work, and it's not that bad. Uh, we're going to come down here and say um, if str does not equal, then we'll do that. And a little bit of spacings. Want to fix that up? Um, let's see, we'll have this equal to false. Uh, let's go ahead, we'll save that off, and let's just test it. We'll see, no errors. So we're starting up, we're actually passing a value in, so we should get something, one of 200, great. And let's, let's actually come up here and turn off the string part. And let's just pass that in and see what happens. I guess I should have stopped it first, but oh, we got it now. And there we go, we're back to the way without it being set. So let's go ahead and, uh, I guess we'll end this one here. We've pretty much got all this one done, at least what I want for the basic functionality of uh, the basic vital bar. Uh, the next video, let's go back and work on our driver. We'll start showing how to hook that up to uh, basically control the scene to help us test a little bit better. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.